who we are. I am uh, Mike Beerkens. I'm a lead developer at Acreage. We uh, do social commerce solutions. Um, mainly do a lot of stuff on Facebook. Um, I've worked all over the place: defense, gaming, social. Uh, I need mean all different languages: plus Java, Python, um, lots of ActionScript. Um, started to do a bunch of Python, Mongo, JavaScript, HTML now for uh, Acreage. Um, that's my email address and my Twitter. I don't really update it very often, so if you want to go there and see cool stuff, you might be able to look. I'm Paul McCarthy, and I work with Mike. Um, can you just speak up this way? Yeah, sure. I can sure try. I am a very quiet person. Sort of sounds funny. Uh, <laughs> I consider myself a fringe developer because I like to just break stuff and I like to explore new territory and make my uh, doing all kinds of stuff for a long time. Apparently, I'm known for my mustache. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about shaving off again. Um, email, Twitter. I update my Twitter all the time. So the problem we decided that we would attack is uh, responsive uh, design on the web is not just for UI, it's also for processing all the, the data that's out there. Um, responsive doesn't, you know, they can respond quickly to your users. If someone comes to your website, um, show them something immediate, you know, don't, not a lot of load times. Uh, even if what you're showing them isn't going to be the exact end result, it's better to have them get something fast and then bring in the rest of your data as it becomes available. Um, so, like I said there, give the user something to look at, to read, an image, something immediately. Um, drop off. You know, you don't want your users to come there, think nothing's happening, and leave. Um, the data that they initially get could be cached. Um, we do this a lot mm -hmm. where you get something that may or may not be the most fresh data, but it's something, and then you can update it later. Um, once you get that user's information, um, and when I say that you like that, login is generally with Facebook, so uh, that's what we do a lot. So we get your Facebook login, and we start processing your data. Um, so we want to start processing that on the server side asynchronously as quick as possible to then give you the really personal data. Um, once we have the relevant personalized data, um, even if there's more to come, you know, you keep showing it, keep giving them something new over and over and over again. Um, we continually update the stuff that we have cached. So you log out or you, know, you leave. Um, Usually we get a, either an offline access token with Facebook, or what we'll do is uh, the, the new uh, Facebook tokens are long-lived tokens. So it gives the developers a little bit more time to you know, go and grab your data again. And what we'll do with that is we'll refresh that cache of your stuff. So let's say that we were looking at your likes and your Spotify listens. We will, you know, frequently or you know periodically go and uh, refresh that data so the next time you come that cache is actually fresh and we may not have to go back to the server because we already have that new data. Uh, the how we came up on this solution was at the office I had this chart that I put up on a whiteboard that was my basic moves here every day and so I moved up and down. I wanted a way to automate that, which brought me to Twitter. And so I have hashtags that I've used to quantify my hairs again. And so I wanted to pull that. 
celery, we then, there's a couple of different ways to use celery. One is on a periodic task, which is sort of like a schedule to our job, or um, we have a, a for my happiness meter, it just runs every four minutes and pulls Twitter and finds out what did I just tweet about. And, uh, you can also do one-time tasks.
that if we sat down and wrote the schema, and just five minutes later it would probably be different. Um, we also had a lot of good experience using Mongo. Um, and uh, I personally, like, I'm not a database guy, so you know, I'm not going to like evangelize on any side, but just starting to um, use Mongo right away seemed pretty easy for me, and it gave us the performance that we wanted. And Mongo is scalable and distributed out of the box. two other developers that were familiar with it, and um, that helps a lot. So do you agree with them moving out to the order and working on them? Yeah, it's like one line of configuration change. They just look like they take out all the stuff you don't need. They have to be used. Anything else?
So the, the basic um, is how you just set up a, a salary task. Um, so this class load suite um, is a task, salary task. Um, we, you just create a run. Um, I'm sending in a username and the OAuth for Twitter. Um, so I initialize Twitter, um, and I go out and I grab my tweet. Um, or I grab whatever user's uh, tweets I want, uh, and for each tweet, I'll process these. So, you know, let's say there's tons of them or whatever, but it doesn't really matter because this is running asynchronously, so um, this will just sit there and run in process tweets. We'll do, you know, a bunch of things. Like, uh, we'll read the tweet, we'll look at the hashtags, try to figure out what we're going to do with the data, store it in Mongo, and then probably uh, send back a message that says, all right, I'm done, and now the client can do what it needs to do with the data. Um, and then to actually um, keep the tasks off from uh, your, from Django or from wherever, uh, you just say, I want to send this task, um, <coughs> and then this result here is an async result, so yeah, you can just keep asking that result, hey, are you finished? Okay, well, what are you doing? Did you fail? Um, uh, are you running? And then it'll tell you when it's done. Uh, and once it's done, then you can uh, load that data. So I think I went through all of this. Yeah. Um, uh, this is another trick we like to do is when we have a task that we know is going to take a while, and by a while we mean anything more than a half a second. So what we'll do is we'll kick back a polling URL that whatever the client is, in our case it's usually JavaScript on the slash, and it will call that URL every two seconds. And notice it's done. So one of the cool things we do here is um, you can actually create a salary task that will just basically call in and see what the response time is. And then that from that task, you can say how long your salary queue is taking to process. And then you can generate a good, the wait in here is like number of seconds to wait until you call back. So that wait is 10 seconds, right? So I get back on the client side in Flash or in JavaScript, I know I, I should wait 10 seconds because it's going to take that long. Then I call back, hopefully my data is there. So, um, but we're creating a, if you can have it uh, be smart, then you need your data, you, know, you don't have to keep calling in and in and in. And uh, what, what you actually call in is you the async result from the previous slide, and you just ask, hey, have you done it? And hopefully you have your data. Yeah, we use that in Ticketmaster because uh, we're loading a ton of data in Ticketmaster. Uh, we, um, the 
we load likes and listens and RSVP data and all that sort of data um, from Facebook, and it takes a while. So um, having a good polling URLs, so then um, we can show loading indicators and all that other stuff, and maybe even show hey, probably have your data in 10 seconds or so, gives the user a better idea of uh, what went, you know, how long they should expect to wait. And this is what that request looks like. So we have them that contact you and um, they're eventually can you go and find out if it failed, if it's dead, well, it's gone with an error. Um, if it's ready, then we try and load the results and respond with that. Sometimes that fails. App, the main we knew it was when we were going to go pull in likes, listens, wants, etc., all that social data. We knew right then those were going to take a while because we were trying to do it synchronously and it, we knew it was going to take a while. So that, those ones are easy. Um, I think Paul said before you know, it's going to take more than a half a second. A second. You can do it then. Um, if, you know, it's kind of like a bigger call on whether or not you think it's a good idea. 
Yeah, that polling URL, so the request comes in and then we're going to go off and process that and send back a URL that the JavaScript then hits. So is that just like a unique, uh, just a unique URL created for a particular request? Yeah. And that URL is where the actual response is going to be, the meaningful response for that. Yeah. Or another polling URL as well. Oh, so they keep on getting created. Yeah, so so if I call, it could be the same one, but it could be a different one. I have the same thing. And um, what we've done is we've just used the um, Accelerate Fast UV okay. as the, you know, the, the URL. So then it's just really easy to just take that off. And then you just, that's your uh, task ID. You just grab that. Um, but yeah, so it, it's one of the two. And you, I mean, you know, l let's say you're super overloaded. You know, you might get a bunch of them back. All right, so that request is Django to see the task ID and check the salary. Yep. If I were to see that task ID and start, like, playing around with the values, could I get somebody else's response? Um, I guess you could. Cool. 
So, up top, yeah. <laughs> so up top here, it's we just we just filled in a bunch of different bands, right? So, um, it's telling me that it's going to recommend to me, you know, the Counting Crows, Mumford and Sons, Jack Johnson, Daft Punk, Cooper Kangaroo, and Nellie McKay. So, what you can see here in this listen data, so this is everything that I've listened to on Spotify. So we went out, pulled all that data in um, with the Celery Test, and then pulled all this in, and uh, this all looks like... These are all the song names. Yeah, these are the song names. So uh, the top part is uh, Mumford and & Sons, and then there's a bunch of random stuff in here. Um, so below that, here's a bunch of... These are all my likes, right? So a lot of these likes aren't going to really match up with music, right? So uh, we can... Sometimes likes will have categories, and we can kind of uh, dismiss some of them, um, but it probably doesn't matter too much. And then down here, yeah. <laughs> so any, anybody have? I that never happens. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the keywords. I've had other pretty cheap. <laughs> What's the keywords? Uh, this is after we analyze all the words. So the cool thing here, like um, with Paul Tevin's meter, I can just go, I have, a, I have Spotify open over here. Um, so I'm just going to search. There's sometimes where you'll like something that isn't exactly that same, like two things have the same name, and since you can't really tell which one's which, we will, you know, we'll actually match you up with something that may not be what you actually like, but no, that's okay. And you, in our Ticketmaster app, actually, what we did was we can, you can go in there and you can say, uh, I actually don't, don't recommend this to me anymore because it's not what you think. <laughs> so. What about bands that have really horrible names? Such as? Uh, live. Ah. That is actually a problem. Like, um, we try to match, um, exact matches for names. Uh, it's not always perfect. There was one that... There was one right away where someone actually, uh, complained, saying, like, I like this, but it showed me this band, and I don't like this band, you know. Um, it's not perfect, but we can we can tweak it and make sure, like, if there's a like that we know that has a certain ID, and we know it's not a band. How about with Drake? With Drake? They like Drake. Drake. University. University. Oh. And they're getting Drake. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, well, we can go in there and we can actually say, you know what, 
if you like this one, it's not really this one. So you can we we can set up a whitelist and a blacklist of um, uh, like IDs. So then those uh, uh, like mismatches don't happen. I did I like that. All right, that was this one. This one. Master client is written on Flash, so we're going to have a little bit of a longer load time than you know, we were talking about being super responsive, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes the Ticketmaster app isn't as responsive as we even want. Um, so what you'll see there is these are events that I want to go to, right? And you can see the updated events tag right there. So what, what was loaded really very first was the cache from S3 from the last time that I was here. Um, what came in updated was the new stuff that got run on the server side, and we sent back that full new JSON event data um, for each one of these sections. So we have recommendations based on um, your listening data and your likes. We have up top our RSVP data, um, so this is like, you can RSVP to go to a concert on Ticketmaster, so, and you can do it in here too, so um, you'll see um, that data. And then at the very top, we have the events that you actually wanted to go to, and that was one of, uh, one of, the, one of the things that we added in is the custom open graph. Um, instead of liking bands, you can want to go to the concert, which is a little bit more uh, expressive of you know, liking the band versus I actually want to go. Um, so you can see that here I want to go to you know, Roger Waters and Coldplay. Um, and if, let's say I want to go to this one, it should. Yeah, so I, we sent that want off to Facebook. Um, it will show up in my timeline, in my ticker, and it will show up on the friends news feeds. Um, with that concert, and it'll click, it'll link back in. Microverse. <laughs> right there. Yeah. So you can see right there in that activity. Um, shows up in there. Um, then that goes into our data, so our graph data. And then now we can recommend events to me based on this, that new band. And it just keeps processing. So. Um, what's up? Did that already happen? Oh, no. Ticketmaster said it would make sense. So you get a bug. Okay. Um, what you asked for, and what we asked for in this app is listen, likes, and uh, your basic data. So the basic data that you get is you know, your name, your you know, profile photo, um, your friend. Um, and you can actually ask for your friend's likes as well, and your friend. I don't know if you can get friends open up that again. No. So what I could ask, with our app could say, I want to get your likes, and I also want to get all your friend's likes. So then we could, we could actually add on to this and say, we recommend this event for you because all your friends are also going to it. Um, so, uh, but right now what we're actually getting is listens and likes and the wants because we're actually generating those wants. Um, so that's our
um, there's a, another global action called music.listen. Whenever you listen to something on Spotify, it will it'll fire off the music.listen and it'll attach all that song data to that and then that goes into the graph almost exactly like that. And we actually get Spotify Any some other ones that are there. Yeah. Any uh, other applications that push data in via music.listen, we can pull. So we're asking we're asking for that. We just use Spotify because it's the most well known. So you can pull your data that you're pushing. Yes. But then you, you have to allow, right? So if you don't allow that, then we don't do it. Ticketmaster was really our biggest um, splash into the Mongo, the Celery, you know, all the Facebookness. Like the reason that it's called Instagram Social Python is because it's exactly what we did for Ticketmaster. We use Python, we use Celery, we use Mongo to um, create this. We also use Celery. It's not a big deal, but you know, probably won't get rid of it at first usage. Yeah. Was there something that you were doing beforehand that um, you didn't like? Like some something that you were doing before HTML Python that sucked and then you saw this and you're like, oh, this is going to make our life easier? We were doing it synchronously and found a server that fell over like switching to the other one. Yeah, we were doing it synchronously. Showed that yeah, if like you know, ten people would have all gone to this app at the same time, the server would have fell over and it would have taken forever. Um, it, you know, just just waiting that long. Um, it loaded pretty fast um, to pull all that data in, and you know that was the multiple layers. So the first S3 JSON cache, then the new data, and actually uh, we were sending all of the social data back in one big chunk. And instead, what we did was we split it into three. So it was your want data, your listen, your recommended data, and your RSVP data. And we sent all, each one of those separately. So then you can get, one, you know, you don't have to wait for your RSVP data to look at your recommendations. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Have you considered nodes that since it comes with so high requirements? We kind of. I think it came up. Um, I think one of the bigger things was, you know, Python's known and Node is new. So, uh,